So we've got four different types of crap testing in the syllabus. It's non-destructive testing. The idea behind non-destructive testing is exactly that. Um, you can test the product without destroying it. A tensile test is a destructive test. A, a um, impact test is clearly destructive because you're trying to snap it in two. Um, a hardness test is classed as non-destructive, but what hardness tests do, a hardness test is driving a um, diamond pyramid into the surface of a metal. So if you've got something that's subject to fatigue, and you can go and put a perfect little pyramid, pyramid dent or a conical dent into the surface, you are creating a stress razor and you are creating a point for um, fracture to start. So hardness tests are classified as non-destructive, but they can initiate fracture through stress razors. So, four tests in the syllabus. Um, first one, die penetrant. Second one, x-ray. Third one, mag particle. I'll split the board into quarters. And the last one is ultrasonic. So, dive penetrant. Two things. Um, cracks can be either external or internal. An external crack obviously penetrates out the surface of the metal. An internal crack is fully internal and does not come out the surface. So dive penetrant can only find external cracks. X-ray finds internal and external. Mag particle tests I haven't covered yet. Internal and external. Ultrasonic, internal and external. The two easiest ones to do are ultrasonic and dive penetrant. I've made a separate video on YouTube for dive penetrant. I'll put a link in the comments below. A dive penetrant test is four steps. You clean the metal. You apply a dye, which is a really, really liquid, runny, low viscosity dye that soaks through capillary action straight into every crack. You then remove the surface dye, apply dye to everything, everywhere. Remove the surface dye. And number four is you apply developer. The video will show you, but basically, if there's a crack coming out the surface, step one, clean it, get rid of all the oil and grease. Step two, when you put the dye, the dye goes into the surface. It's all over the top, but it also soaks through capillary action down into the crack. Then you come along with your cleaner, Remove all the surface dye. It's still trapped in the crack. Last thing that happens is the dye comes out of the surface. The developer is powdered chalk. Which just sucks up all the liquid. So when I put the developer over, the dye comes out of the crack and gets sucked into the liquid chalk. And it shows up as a big bright red blob if it's red dye, or it might be a fluorescent dye when you can see it under ultraviolet light. Dye penetrant tests are used extensively in aircraft because fatigue cracks are surface cracks. Because a fatigue crack comes from the surface of the metal, you can use dye penetrant. It's cheap, it's easy. You can't really stick an aircraft in an X-ray machine.
I haven't seen an x-ray machine as big as a jumbo jet. You can do bits and pieces, but if you've got to check the whole airframe for cracks, they do this. Inside the engine, they physically check every blade for cracks using dive penetrant. Reason being, quick, easy, more or less reliable, if it's a surface crack. If it's something inside, of course, if there's no surface crack, forget about it. X-ray testing. An X-ray test works both internal and external. How it works is we put a, these days, a charge couple device, a plate underneath that picks up the digital signal coming through. The X-rays converts it into something digital. Um, back 40 years ago, X-rays developed on film. The, uh, the radiographer took an X-ray, they had to send the film away, get developed, and around about, in a rush job, four hours, if it didn't matter, two days, you found out how bad your arm was broken. Okay? These days, it's instantaneous because they've got an electronic X-ray detector, a charged couple device. So, here's a, underneath, that's the detector. Here's the metal. I'm going to put two cracks. One of them's horizontal, one of them's vertical. One's horizontal, one's vertical for each different type of test. So, X-rays get bombarded down through the surface. The metal absorbs X-rays. If there's, if it doesn't absorb very many X-rays coming through here, this would show as a massive white spike because it's only got that much of the metal to go through. And then it's just sapping down the crack where it's not getting absorbed by the metal. So here that shows up definitely as a crack. If you think about it, but this one, down here the x-rays have got to travel through that much metal. Here, they have to travel through the identical amount. So it doesn't really show up a horizontal crack or a crack that's 90 degrees to the direction of path of the x-ray. So x-rays are really good if the crack's 90 degrees to the, or parallel to the path of the um, x-ray. Really horrible if it's 90 degrees. It'll just show as a tiny shadow, which is inconclusive. Third one, magnetic particle. Only works for three metals. Iron, nickel and cobalt, because they are the only three magnetic metals. Magnetic particle testing puts a north pole here and fires a magnetic field down here to a south pole through a piece of sheet metal this is commonly used in. The very first, um, one of the very first jobs I had is doing this. Just imagine having kerosene full of red magnets, little red magnetic particles, and you spend all day splashing it over and you walk home smelling like kerosene. So what this is, on the surface, we just put, wrong, go back one, magnetic fields. If there's nothing, the magnetic field travels parallel. Yeah, here, that one's traveling along until it hits here, then it goes out the surface. That one goes underneath. And it makes a little perturbation in the magnetic field. A little bump in the magnetic field. This one goes around it and it just generally creates just a tiny, tiny bump that's really hard to see. Yeah? Visible, but so difficult to see it's impossible to um, really find easily. Things that are 90 degrees to the field show straight up like nothing else. If I've got kerosene over that with magnets, they literally stick out there like that. You cannot miss the fact there's a defect. When you make steel, it's sometimes got bits of the slag inside it and the stuff from the furnace, the silicon, silica. The silica, the slag, the calcium from the blast furnace gets trapped in it, gets rolled into the steel and comes through inside, in between all the grains. That's really bad if you want to make tin cans or if you're trying to form a car body panel because it just 
It's a stress raiser. It initiates fracture. Because ceramic, obviously, if you've got sand and steel, the sand will just shatter when you try to stretch it. Yeah? So this is great for detecting cracks at 90 degrees to the surface. It's only so-so for detecting cracks that are parallel to the field. There's a common theme here, I hope you've seen. So that's mag particle tests. Finally, the ultrasonic test is once again fairly easy to apply. Some of you might have had an ultrasonic um, test if you've injured your um, arm or injured a joint and the um, doctors use the same machine. You put a gel on top and then you fire sound waves. Ultrasonic, high frequency sound waves. I'll put a speaker there for want of a better description. You just fire sound waves in. Sound travels through objects at a speed that's fixed. I know that sound through air is 340 metres a second. Sound through water is about one kilometre a second. Water's got a density of one, steel's got a density of 7.85. So I'm guessing that steel it travels a lot faster than it does through water. If I fire off a signal, so send, transmit, receive. I'm going to send off two signals here, and then they just measure the time. If it's got to travel through, let's say that's 30 mil, that sound wave there has to travel 30 mil. Oh, sorry, that sound wave there has to travel 60 mil. 30 down, 30 back. And then the time is so much. So down the bottom we have a little chart here with decibels of sound you're hearing versus time from the time they fired it off. So they fire it off, start a stopwatch, see how long it takes to come back. If you don't have a crack, you see start, finish. Yeah? If, however, over here on the crack, I'll do it in red. Transmit, receive. Some of the sound waves hit the crack, bounce back early. Other sound waves come straight through, come back up. So what you see here is, start. When you see the two peaks in the ultrasonic, you know there's something reflecting sound waves back early. You can get ultrasonic tools to measure the thickness of plate that we use regularly in industry. You type in steel and you go and measure it. And if it started out life as 60 millimetre plate, you go and measure the thickness. Maintenance do all the time. It's currently 55 mil. Oh, it's worn down to 50 mil. Without going inside and trying to take a survey of what is it from the inside, what is it from the outside. Just imagine a bit of steel plate that's around, um, coiled in a tube and 100 metres long. So it's a, like a big pipe or a furnace wall. You're not exactly going to cut the furnace in half to find out how thick it is or drill a hole straight through it to find out how thick it is. They just use ultrasonics. Yeah? Ultrasonics works great for the horizontal cracks. It can't hear the vertical cracks. Ultrasonics works great for the horizontal cracks. It can't hear the vertical cracks. So the application of the testing method depends on what sort of crack you're looking for. Quite often to be sure, they'll say, do an X-ray and an ultrasonic. It's gotta pass both. If it passes an X-ray and an ultrasonic, the X-ray finds the vertical cracks, the ultrasonic finds the horizontal defects. If it passes both, then it's probably good. Dipenetrant is a field test. Used in the field to check for um, defects on site. It's used in welding. When you finish a weld, dipenetrant, make sure you don't have a surface crack. Because a surface crack in um, a weld is probably going to be a stress razor. Especially if it's a car chassis you've repaired. Last thing you want to do when you repair a car is send it out with a stress razor in it. Make particle is messy, it's used on samples in situ, so you've got to take it to your test kit. 
big pump or a, basically something about the size of a desk with a big um, tub full of kerosene, 40 litres of kerosene mixed up with magnetic oxides inside it and a pump that sprays it on, squirts it everywhere and you um, put the magnet on it to see what happens. So it's used for small components that you can physically check. They're your four tests in the syllabus, that's what they are.